Again, we want to say happy Father Day to all of our fathers out there. We pray that you are having a great day thus far. But we did come into this place to worship today, amen, to have a great time in the Lord. And let me say, we have already had a great time in the Lord this morning in New Victory. And so I do not expect anything less here, amen. So at this time, we're going to ask that the pray team will come and give us our opening selection at this time. Followed by them, we'll come back with our apostle Creed.
ain't no grateful. Amen. Amen. That's all right. That's all right. I, I wish I could say that, Brother David. I don't think my voice will let me go there. But I am so grateful that we have a praise team. Amen. That I don't have to sing. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you don't mind, please stand wherever you are. Just if you were standing where you are as we recite the Apostle Creed together. And as people of God, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ on the small island, who were conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the planet's power, was crucified, dead and dead. The third day he rose from the dead, and he ascended to heaven, and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this you come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the beginning of sin, the resurrection of life, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. We're going to ask now if you, Brother Taylor McDaniel will come and give us our invocation. Do we have another selection by this powerful praise team followed by the New Testament scripture after the praise team will be by Brother John and the New Testament.
tribute. I'm gonna ask that this young lady will come forward, that Miss Destiny McDaniel will come forward, and if all of you would take part in this litany for our Father's Day uh, reading, yes, ma'am, you can read it right there. And if if you don't mind, if you would please stand at this time and hope you have a copy in your hand with you. If you do not please let the usher know they will get you a copy. Amen. We want to read this Father Day litany and tribute to all of our fathers in honor of them for this day. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The world's human community began with one man. The redemption of humanity was labored while well without one man. Today, we celebrate the contributions of strong, godly men to our community. We celebrate the man who is a See God's great plan for the lives and the lives of the people. We appreciate men who, with the spirit of David, seek repentance as men after God's own heart. We acknowledge the men with the obedience of Abraham on God's salvation, help shape your life and your families, and ultimately change the world. We honor men who, like Peter, are fallible yet passionate about serving the Lord and fervently building his kingdom. As Joseph carries his father and his we care for me and my teachers to share our resources, our time, and our unconditional love. We pray for men who have the inner and outward strength of Samson, but have lost their way. We are grateful for men who, like the Apostle Paul, teach us the truth and principles and values. Today we celebrate men who serve all things in love of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Amen. 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 Thank you so very much, Jen. Thank you for reading that lengthy for our Father today. Indeed, we do wish all of our fathers a happy Father's Day. Um, there are no announcements at this time. At this time, we will have another selection of this great praise team followed by the spoken word by your children.
Amen, amen. And they were singing that song like a dear brother Marvin P. Yeah. <laughs> Back there singing. Amen. And I, 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 I promised myself I wasn't going to cry today. I remember. I remember God and me and like brother Marvin P. Yeah. Brother Harvey P. I remember those brothers because they took me under their wings and they helped me when I first got here. And I just thank God for calling me and amen. And this church has been blessed with a bunch of godly brothers. I, 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 uh, I'm just so grateful, amen, to be here at this time. I'm just so grateful. So thank you, praise team. Thank you. Let us pray. And Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus. Thank you for godly means in the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for just allowing me to, to win at this moment right now. This feeling, this spirit that I have right now. Thank you for all the blessing around good people. I don't know why. Because I really don't deserve it, but I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You've been there ever since the way. And I honor you there, Father. For you're so good. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Mark, the fifth chapter. Mark, the fifth chapter, verses one through eight. Mark, chapter five, verses one through eight. <clears throat> And I'll be reading from the King James Version in the States. And they came over from unto the other side of the sea into the country of Gadarene. And when he would come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. Who had his dwelling amongst the tomb, and no man could bind him, no, not with chain. Because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chain that had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers broken into pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountain and in the tomb, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar, he ran and worshipped him. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. This morning, in honor of Father's Day, I want to preach a misplaced man with an unclean spirit. A misplaced man with an unclean spirit. The way a man treats God is an indicative of the relationship he has with others. If he loved God with all of his heart, with all of his mind, his soul, and his might, he would realize who God is uh -huh. and how much God loves him. He would love himself and respect himself. Right. He would value and value all of the relationship that he has. He will be a better friend. A better husband, a better brother. 
And this is the place where God wants a man to be in his life. God wants men to be in their rightful place. A rightful place is a place of godliness. A rightful place is having Christ in your life. A man's rightful place is having a stable family environment where he's functioning as a father. A rightful place is service in church where he's worshiping the true and living God. A rightful place is in his community where he's operating in the power to speak truth and empower others in the kingdom building process. When a man is in his rightful place, he is powerful. And that comes from being with right with God. And the problem that I see today is my most standing in pulpit and tell the truth that we have some men that are not in their rightful place because they don't have a right relationship with God. God divine, orderly divine man to walk in his way. He said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But most men, not all, they're out of place. They're out of place when we don't father our children. We're out of place when we don't we don't provide for our wives. We're out of place when we lie and cheat and steal to get everything. We're out of place. Why did we don't work and we live off our women? We're out of place. The statistics say that African American men make up fifty percent of those that are in prison, but only make up twelve percent of the population. We're out of place. We're, we're out of place. We're out of place. So I want to go on record today and say that something is causing not only our men, but our young men to be out of their place with God. Right, and I start by to tell somebody it is an ungodly spirit that is working on the inside of them that's driving them out of their rightful position. All right, man. Something got a hold of them and is pulling them away from their place of promise. It is an ungodly spirit that is provoking their flesh and we need to pray that God deliver them and bring them back into a rightful place in the kingdom of God. And I stop by to tell somebody if I'm stepping on your shoes, so be it. All I'm saying is that if this pertains to you, then I got some good news today because in the text, Jesus on his way. Good God, my. The text tells me that, that Jesus now has traveled to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. He just come from demonstrating his power. And now, the, as he's traveling over there, somebody in the ship asked, what matter man is this? Right. And I thought about to tell y'all I got the answer today. He's married, baby. Amen. He, he's a man. Good God Almighty. That's my Savior. He's my strong tower. He's all that I ever need. He, that's what matter man is. He's a man that allowed me to get up this morning. Hold in my right mind. With shoes on my feet. That's what matter man is. Misplaced man. <laughs> when you misplaced, brothers, here's a thing that can help you to understand if you're misplaced. Watch this. Number one, you have no self control. This brother <laughs> lacked self control. Because the Bible said that when he came, when Jesus was coming up out of the ship, immediately there met him a man out of the tomb, watch this, with an unclean spirit. And this man had something on the inside that took control of him. He could no longer regulate his thought. He could no longer uh, operate with his family. He could no longer operate within his community. In other words, he was out of control. And today, we have too many young brothers that are out of control. Yes, That's not. They're controlled by drugs and alcohol. They're controlled by what people ought to think that they ought to be. They're controlled by their peers that saying you ought to wear red, you ought to wear blue. They're controlled by their anger and their rage. They are out of control and now for some reason they have become part of their normal behavior. It is not normal to walk around with your pants around your ankle. That is not normal. It is not normal to go into the store and can't act respectable with a yes ma'am or yes sir. That's not normal. But somewhere along the way, we have failed as godly men to regulate them and help them to gain self-control. We have failed as godly men to teach them the right way to treat a woman, the right way to open up a door, the right way to take a woman out of the the right way to pay the bill. We have failed as godly men. 
So here's the issue. When you have lost control of your issues, your issues are putting you in despair. And when you're in despair, it takes you out of your rightful place with God. And when you lose control, I want y'all to get this. DJ, put it in the chat. When you don't have control over your life, what did you can't have healthy relationships? The text says that he was so wild that people tried to hold him down with chains and shackles, but he would break them apart. He was so wild that he could not be around people, therefore, he could not have any meaningful relationship. As a result, he found himself living alone, living in a graveyard. <laughs> when you are in despair and people can't handle your issues, they will leave you in an environment where you only can be around what is dead. In other words, when you find yourself around what is dead, there is no growth there. I hope y'all want to. Here's what I'm trying to say to our young brothers that. When you find yourself isolated, you can't have no control, you can't have no good relationship. It's not you, it's what's working on the inside of you. Never said. Uh -huh. And when you find that thing on the inside of you that you can't have no relationship, you can't have lack, you lack self-control, you start hurting yourself. Because the Bible said that he would go around day and night, go between the tomb and the mountain, cry it out and cutting himself. First, he cried out. And in the original language of Hebrew, that means that was a gut cry. In other words, I don't know if anybody, if you ever had so much pain in your gut, you got a mighty, no matter how you try to do it, that thing just hurt. And there was some stuff that's going on inside of our young men that they ain't willing to tell nobody, but it just hurt. It hurt all the way down in my gut. And so the only way that I can deal with that situation is I got to cut my flesh because what's working on the inside of me, I'm trying to get it out. Creep. <laughs> Because here it is, brother, you're not literally cutting yourself. But when you take alcohol, you're cutting yourself. When you lower yourself down to somebody else's standard, you cutting yourself. Somebody look at a brother here and say, brother, please stop cutting yourself. Yeah. You're self-medicating because you want to take the pain that's on the inside of you out. Good God Almighty. But look what happened. I got to take my seat because look what happened in verse 6 it says but when he saw Jesus yeah. I just stop right there yes, that's so good yeah. but when he saw Jesus yes, afar oh the Bible said he didn't walk but he ran yeah. oh, God, my. he ran and he worshipped him and look that, that little word, B-U-T, means that something is getting ready to change in your life. Yeah. You know, every time I see that word, but, I get excited. Because that means God is getting ready now to take me in another direction. What am I saying? That conjunction, I thank God for that conjunction. And you ought to thank God for that conjunction in your life. Because that but is what changed you. And if anybody in here can't get it, well, let me explain it like this. I think the songwriter said, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, barely staying within, singing to ride no more. But the master of the sea heard my despair and The water he lifted me. Now in my safe and life. Love. Love lifted me. I got to tell you this. 
Because if I just stop at verse 6, I would be doing you injustice. Because the Bible says in verse 7, that when he cried out, when he cried out, the demon inside of him asked Jesus, what in the world are you going to do? What do you have to do with me? And what am I saying? Some of you are talking when you know that you're talking to the wrong person. In other words, what am I saying? The Bible says, fell down and worship. Watch this. The demon inside of him fell down with him when he worshiped. Good God, what? The demon praised him. Because the demon said, Jesus, the most high God. In other words, you got to watch out for people who behave that don't match their lips. In other words, they say that they praise God. <laughs> they say they got Jesus on their lips, but they, they don't really mean it. And I struggle with this thing. I said, why in the world with this demon get down on his knees and begin to worship God? I said, surely this demon want to run away from me. But I read somewhere in the text that says the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Everything under heaven. I don't know about y'all, but every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So I know you've been messed up. I know you've been right. But ever since you ran to Jesus, then God bless you. Oh, God. 
God to bless you today. You want to make that thing right? Come. Come. Be all the way to put it in your hands. Amen. 
church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Thank you all for joining us for this, this Father Day celebration. We do have gifts. Do we get the gifts? Okay, they're in the back. Amen. Yeah. Please, Father, see, get your gift on the way out. Uh, my wife picked out some stuff. I picked out some stuff. We argue about the stuff. <laughs> I was like, don't nobody want that. <laughs> y'all, look, they got on me. I was like, y'all always give me a t-shirt. I don't want no t-shirt. But I got to be grateful. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful that they thought about me. Amen. Amen. And my daughter this morning brought me breakfast. Amen. One got me a gas card. Right, they even bought me a push more. Oh, I don't know if that's a gift or not. They were trying to say something. A weedie? Here is a car. They bought me a weedie. They trying to say I ain't doing enough, brother. <laughs> The, yeah, they want me to go to work. That's what it was. But I, I, I love the fact that they were thinking about you. And we're thinking about you all. Listen, have a great evening. Enjoy the rest of the day wherever God has a family. Know that we love you. And we'll always be there to support you. Thank you for this praise. Queen was with me early this morning. He's been playing over there with us in New Victory. Thank you for everything. Thank you. And so we're going to continue to keep that church lifted up in prayer that God will be done. Amen. As well as our church. You know, we're getting ready to go to conference. We're getting ready to go to conference in July. And so we'll be down there the 22nd and the 23rd. Next year is a general conference. That's the big one. We're going to Ohio. So I'm trying to put my name in the hat to go to the general conference of the delegate. Last time I went, I paid my way. This time I want them to pay my way. Amen. <laughs> So that's the goal, but but we, we're praying and they're gonna be voting on this Friday, so I have a good chance to get voting in. So thank you all so much. Yes, man. Oh yeah, the youth fundraiser. Yeah, listen, sorry. Oh, thank you for reminding me. We have a fundraiser at Ridge Ferry Park. We're gonna start at four o'clock, and we have barbecue pork plate, fish plate, and chicken plate. For sale, amen. Looking at me, these are trying to make sure I got it right for ten dollars, and we invite everyone to come out to Ridge Now, listen, y'all like this praise team, yeah. amen. They're gonna be playing live out there. Yeah. Now, now they told me Luther Vandross is gonna show up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how true that is, but they're gonna be playing live out there from six to eight p.m. And so we're going to have a great time. We're going to fellowship. We're going to eat. We're going to have live music. It's going to be at Ridge Ferry Park. Starts at 4 o'clock. We're going to be right there under the pavilion. We do not have a stage. Everybody said, y'all got the stage. No, we do not have a stage. We have a little small pavilion against the wall. But it's going to be all right. I'm telling you, it's going to be all right. And we're, we're going to be setting up out there. We actually got there a little earlier. But we have everything donated. Thank you for the sign out for donating the item. Thank you. This is a major fundraiser for our youth. And we're getting ready to go to the burn spot in Atlanta. So we have a hotel room already booked. We've got the bus booked. We're ready to ride. And then we're going to take them next month to Pirate Bay in Alabama so they can go swimming. So they got a lot of things planned for the youth this summer. So we thank God for you. And don't forget, we will have a vacation Bible school. We will have a vacation Bible school. So we're looking out for that. So thank y'all so very much. If all hearts and minds set fire, let us stand. Let us stand. Let us stand. Thank y'all so very much.
Ahora, 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 ahora